I'd like to welcome you to a brand new video series that I've been thinking about for a while now, and it's called Photo Redux. So basically, the gist of it is this. I go back into my archives, you know, like years and years ago, and sadly, but fortunately for this video series, there are more than a handful of photos that regrettably I at one point thought were really good and shared online and, you know, the whole story of that. So this series is with each episode, I'm going to take one of the photos that tragically I processed and shared in a certain way, and then we're going to start over. And there are several reasons why this is important. First, I think it's important to know where you were in order to know where you're going. So as a photographer back in 2007, 2008, 2009, you know, I had certain sensibilities, certain kind of styles that really I gravitated towards. And now that I'm older and I guess wiser, uh, you know, maybe it's different. Two, there are all new technologies and software out there. So cameras have gotten better. Sensors have gotten better. The software that you use to edit. Lightroom, On1, all of these different pieces of software have gotten better. So stylization is a completely different thing today than it was 10 years ago. And one of my favorite things is I love trying different things on the same image. So, you know, back then I did tone mapping and all these aggressive things. And maybe now there's something different. Maybe I can go black and white or apply a different type of style or filter. So that's what this whole entire series, the Photo Redux series is all about. So let's just go ahead and go back to the backlog. I've got plenty of photos to work on. So that's a good thing for this series. And we're gonna have some fun. Now for this first episode, I'm going back to 2009 in June when I was living in Boston, Massachusetts. And right in downtown Boston, there is this really beautiful kind of arch for the fire department down there. And I was walking by and I walked in, you know, the, the door bay was open and they had their engine in there, which is awesome. I asked the firefighters if it was cool for me to take some photos and they were totally cool. They're just like, you know, if we have to go, we have to go. So at the time I was shooting with Canon gear. And for this photo, I used a Canon 5D Mark II and the Canon EF 15 millimeter fisheye lens, which for those of you who know me, that's like one of my favorite lenses of all time. Uh, pretty much any fisheye. I call it the funk buster because when you look through a fisheye lens, if you're in any sort of creative funk, it doesn't matter because that lens just breaks away any creative block. It's just such a fun lens to use, but it's also very easy to overdo it. So as you can see with this photo, there were some tragic decisions in terms of stylization, but that's what it was for me back then. Uh, I tone mapped everything. I bracketed everything and then put it through HDR, whether I needed it to or not. So what I'd like to do is jump over to the computer now. I'm gonna show you some details about the original photo, and then we're gonna walk through how today I'm gonna stylize it and then we can kind of compare the two. Now, before we jump over, I'd like to remind you to hit that subscribe button so you get access to all of the new videos that I'll be sharing every week. All right, let's have some fun. All right, so here is the majesty of this photo that I was telling you about. And again, 2009, let's bring up the metadata. You can see up there that it is at uh, June, 2009. And it was taken with the 5D Mark II and the Canon 15 millimeter fisheye lens. Now, listen, this is just a, why it's important to do this series. I, I strongly believe that there's a lot that can be learned here. And if I were to criticize the photo, so let's just do some critiques. First, obviously, there's just way, way strong of a uh, the difference between highlights and shadows. It's just the processing is abrupt. Uh, the actual uh, histogram looks pretty good which is not bad. I mean, I'm actually kind of surprised that I had the histogram looking okay, but you can see it's veering towards uh, the left, which is the dark side. And so things like over here, it just looks awful. I mean, just, it looks like it's stained. The shadows look dirty. Um, the colors are way too strong and I over sharpened it across the board. So just like, is this assault on the eyes? I mean, look at the colors over here. They're just way, way too strong. Um, and I remember, I actually do remember editing this photo I don't know what it was. I mean, that's kind of what my stylization was like. And so right now, uh, I think it's important to take a look at what, you know, how this photo was made up. So you can see here, there are the five brackets. So let's just walk through it. Here's the tone mapped final version. And if we stair step through it, uh, actually I'll tab out so we can see everything. Um, that's the zeroed out bracket. And you can see I cropped in 
which is still something I think is the right move. You could, there are all these, because there's a 15 millimeter fisheye, it's so wide uh, that it captured everything in the firehouse. Um, I got these kind of lawn chairs, which are, I, you know, and in hindsight, I kind of wish I moved this office chair over here. Um, but then we get the highlight details through the windows, which is good, and the light that was kind of coming in. And then we start getting the shadow details under the engine, uh, and then just more of the same. I'd originally used Photomatics by HDR Soft to tone map the photo because that's what everyone was using at the time. Lightroom didn't really have any sort of HDR tone mapping or panel mapping back then. So we're gonna, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use the Lightroom uh, HDR tone mapping. So what I'm going to do is select the five brackets here, right click, we're going to go to photo merge and then go to HDR. Uh, and here is Lightroom's HDR. And if it looks kind of boring, that's kind of the point. The reason why it doesn't look like anything is because most of the times I think people have auto tone turned on and that starts, what it does is it starts auto toning. And I don't really like that. I prefer to tone myself from scratch. So I turn that off. Now I don't need to auto align and I don't need to de-ghost because the camera was on a tripod and there was absolutely no movement whatsoever. So let's go ahead and hit merge to get that going. All right, so if we go here, you could see there is our tone mapped photo. Let's go to the develop module here. So looking at the histogram, we have plenty of tonal information. And that's actually an important thing to bring up is that the reason why uh, HDR was actually really helpful back then, back in the day, is because a lot of the cameras, their sensors weren't as good in terms of handling dynamic range as they are today. I mean, today's cameras, like the A7R Mark III by Sony, that's supposed to be able to handle 15 stops of dynamic range, which is insane. Here, with the 5D Mark II Canon, it wasn't as much of the case, and so being able to get multiple brackets helped in terms of getting more of that dynamic range. So here we are in the photo, and like I said, the first thing I want to do is crop in. So I'm gonna go in here, I have my proportions locked, and I'm gonna tighten up just right around there. Move it around a little bit. And I think we are good there. Actually, I'll move it over to the left a little bit more. And I'm going to move it up. See, that's kind of, uh, this is editing live. So let's go ahead here. And this is a good overall composition. Now, first thing I want to do is start adjusting tone. So I'm going to open up the overall exposure first. So I'm just going to brighten up the whole exposure like that. Now, on the left here, it's a bit too dark and on the right, it's way too bright. And this is again, this is the whole thing about HDR is kind of starting with a uh, even exposure. So I'm gonna take the graduated filter in Lightroom. I'm gonna go to the shadows and I'm gonna open this up a bit. And then I'm gonna drag over from the left. And you can see how it just evens out everything from uh, the back to the front looks even. I'm gonna create new and then change over to highlights. And I'm gonna close those highlights. And you can see how we're getting more of that information. So as I drag the highlights in, I'm gonna also drop the exposure just a little bit. And now you can see we have, the, I mean, from left to right, front to back. It's a really nice evenly exposed photo, which I think is important. That's kind of what I wanna start with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some, you know, basic control changes like contrast, a little bit of clarity, and a little bit of vibrance. And then we're gonna to go to the tone curve. And I love the tone curve. And this is where I would never have even thought about doing this back in 2009, never in a million years. And admittedly, I never really touched the tone curve. I always just used the basic sliders in Lightroom, you know, the, the highlights, the whites, the shadows and the blacks. I never really touched the tone curve, but the tone curve is actually so powerful. So what I'm gonna do is uh, I have it set here. You might have these four sliders, but I prefer actually applying points. So just click on that button there and I'm going to create my S curve. So bring up the highlights, bring down shadows. And then one of the things I admittedly really like lately is that kind of vintagey look where you soften or open up the shadows. To do that, just take that left black point and drag up. And you can see the shadows start to get kind of soft, especially over here. Now, it's getting a bit too bright, so I'm gonna take that white point back down a little bit. And I'm gonna go up, and I'm gonna drop the exposure just a bit. So you can see now, let's just kind of hit the backslash key, 
This is the kind of HDR tone mapped image as it came through uh, the tone mapping algorithm. Here's what we did with stylization really briefly. And the next thing I'm gonna do is go to split toning, which I do all the time now. Another thing I never ever did, never with 2009 Brian, never did split toning. So I'm gonna go and I'm gonna press the option key while dragging on hue, which will show me a full preview of the hue, how it applies to the highlights only. So I'm gonna go right here somewhere to the orange yellows and add that. Not too strong, something like that. And with the shadows, I'm gonna go to the opposite side of the color wheel, I'm gonna to go to blue and add that now to the shadows. And you can see that the blues are getting a bit too strong, so I wanna bias it more towards that warmer highlight. So there's this balance slider that I'm gonna drag over to the right. If I go to the right, it goes to the highlights, left to the shadows, and so I'm gonna add a little bit more of the uh, highlight, that warm tone. And now we can start sharpening. So the way that I sharpen is I take my little tool target, I hover over an area that's supposed to be sharp like the headlight. Now I'll press and hold on the option key and start dragging out until I start to see the light get really sharp. Then I wanna remove the sharpening from areas that don't need it. So I'm gonna go to the masking slider and just like with the amount I'm pressing and holding an option, and dragging out until I only get kind of the edges, like when I start to see an outline of shapes, which is right there. All right, cool. Now there's one last thing that I want to do uh, to the photo in terms of the stylization. I want to really draw the attention to the front of the engine, like right here. And so to do that, I'm gonna go into Photoshop and we're going to apply a kind of a tilt shift blur. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So to do that, let's go to Photo, edit in, and then we're gonna send it to Adobe Photoshop CC 2018. All right, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop, and the first thing that I'm gonna do is just create a duplicate layer by hitting Command or Control J, and then we're gonna to go to the Filter menu, and then go to Blur Gallery, and select Tilt Shift Blur. All right, and so you can see this is the, the typical Tilt Shift Blur, but what I wanna do is I actually wanna make it vertical, so I'm gonna put my cursor right around that dot, and I'm gonna drag it until it's vertical, kind of matching the height of the truck. Next thing I'm gonna do is take the solid colored bars and move them outward. That controls the area. Those, the, the space in between the two solid colored bars are where the, uh, the area will be sharp. There won't be any blurring. And then the distance from the solid color to the broken line, that's kind of your feather uh, in terms of where the blur starts to transition in. And then outside of that dotted broken line is where it becomes totally blurred. So what we wanna do is control that specific area. So I'm just moving this around over here. Like I said, I want the front to be blurred. And then I'm going to bring that broken line further out to create more of a natural transition. And then the blur amount here is a bit too strong at 15 pixels. So I'm just gonna change that to about 11 pixels. And then I'm also going to click on the high quality so that the actual rendering is of a higher quality. I typically like that. It takes a little bit longer to process, but I think it's totally worth it. And so you can see here, this is kind of the preview of what we have going on. Um, I'm actually gonna bring this solid line in just a little bit more. And there, we're good to go. The last thing I'm gonna do is just quickly save to return back to Lightroom and we're gonna finish this off. All right, so in Lightroom, pretty much the only thing I want to do is apply a bit of a vignette, but here's the thing. Let's take a look at what an, a normal kind of post-crop vignette will do. You can see how it's just really darkening this left side here. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna apply a radial filter and I'm gonna draw it kind of like an oval, position it uh, kind of on the front here. We'll even rotate it just a little bit. I'm trying to match the shape, the general shape of the front here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go to exposure. We're gonna drop that exposure just a little bit, drop the highlights just a little bit, but I'm also gonna open up the shadows because like I said, they were getting a bit too harsh, uh, especially on the left side. And so here now I think we have a really nice, really cool image. Let's just before and after in terms of that vignette. So you see how it kind of draws the eye right towards the center of the frame, which is kind of what I want. And let's go to the grid here and let's compare. So we'll take this version, this version, and that version and we'll compare them. So here um, you can see that this is the original 
and this is what we were completed with. I mean, and I think this is really exactly what the what illustrates the difference between 2009 Brian, 2017 Brian. And I think it's really important to remember what you, kind of photography you were back then. Don't be ashamed of it. I mean, it's kind of embarrassing, but you know, own it and then take the things that you've learned since then and see if you can fix the image. I mean, this image right here now is one that I would I'm totally going to share again. I'll never ever share the one on the left, but if you look at the two, I think it does a really good job of illustrating uh, the kind of photographer I was and what I what appealed to me, uh, you know, in terms of stylization and composition and how things have kind of I don't know if you want to call it evolved or matured, but definitely changed. And again, I want to thank you so much for being here. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up and be sure to subscribe so you get access to all of the videos they'll be sharing every week. And I hope you enjoy this. Let me know in the comments what you thought. And I'll see you next time.